I think the patrol gunship is ready for some paint. All right, let me catch up with kind of where I'm at since the last episode. Uh, I got it assembled, took care of the seam lines. Uh, there was a lot of scribing involved, a lot of sanding, a lot of stuff like that. I got the forward uh, clear part, the canopy portion, masked off. And then I've primed everything in. Uh, it's Mr. Surfacer 1000, but I put in uh, a bit of uh, Tamiya XF63 German Gray because I wanted to start off with a little darker of a base coat uh, for the primer. Now, I've left these uh, solar panels off. Uh, it's one of the things you can always commend the Empire for. They had green power. Um, but I've left these solar panels off to make everything easier to paint. I've left these gun turrets off because the barrels, I'll break those for sure. And then, of course, I left off this uh, forward canopy framing uh, so that I can maintain the masking over it. It would have been a lot harder to mask it with this on there. Now what I'm going to do in this episode is get everything painted up. And for this, I'm going to be brush painting. Now the style I'm going to be going for uh, with, with painting this patrol gunship is one that's going to be loosely based on uh, the Bad Batch animated series that recently was out on Disney+. Plus. Uh, if you watched any of that, you know that the ship that the Bad Batch flew around in uh, if you if you go back and look at some of the screenshots uh, up close on the ship, you'll see that it was very dirty, very grimy, uh, very worn down looking. So I want to try and somewhat recreate that look. I don't want it to be necessarily that dark, but recreate that very streaked, very dirty, very worn out appearance um, because I just think it looks kind of cool and I think it'll work pretty well on this model. Let me use a very different application technique from what I normally do. I've got some Vallejo Sky Gray in my palette, and I've sent it down fairly heavily with water, um, probably about four parts water to one part paint. And what I'm going to do is get some on this just old nylon brush, uh, wick off some of it. I'm just going to start streaking it on there in a very haphazard fashion. Uh, You'll notice I'm not trying to be very neat. I just want to spread this paint out. If you look carefully, you can see how thin it is. And I'm not going for complete opaque coverage, but rather I want to retain that streaked look. Now some areas I'm not going to be able to use downstrokes to get to. So what I do is I go in and I hit those, and then I return to the downstrokes to kind of even things out. Because the paint is very wet, it's going to be workable for a longer time. And this is not going to be the only layer that I'm going to put on there. Because what I want is this very streaked, very splotchy, very worn appearance. That's why I went with that darker uh, primer color so that it'll it'll uh, allow that to, to shine through and I'm working on the sides for right now that way I can hold on to the top and the bottom and uh, not have to get my fingers all gummy but I've painted this side mostly completely you see the amount of streaking that I left in there now what I'm gonna do is go back and using the same color but I've thinned it just a little more. I'm just going to begin applying more of the paint, but this time I'm going to go for less coverage. I'm going to deliberately miss areas, streak areas, um, not fully develop areas, whatever you want to call it. Now there is no right way or wrong way to do this. It's entirely subjective. And it's completely based on what you think looks good, what you're trying to achieve for uh, the effect that you're going for. Now I've applied three or four layers of the sky gray. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Vallejo cold white and I've thinned that down even further and I'm going to dab off my brush even more and I'm going to go back in just like before I'm going to do that streaking but I'm going to be a little more reserved about it again so that it will add to the streaking but also just kind of increase the opacity of the overall finish now one thing I feel like I need to point out if you're looking at this video this finish and you're thinking that's the worst thing I've ever seen that's okay not everybody's gonna like every finish not everybody's gonna like every technique not everybody's gonna like the way one person does something so if this isn't something that you really like well number one just don't do it but number two I would urge you when you're watching something that you know your initial reaction is oh I don't like that step back for a moment and look at it and go what can I take away you know maybe this is not a method that you would do for an overall finish but maybe this would spark some ideas for some weathering or maybe you know it sparks an idea for how you could do something that's to, to use kind of a musical term a riff on this this method you know a variation of it now if you've paid attention to Star Wars models you know that quite often the various panels around the vehicle are given a slightly different color um, can be blues it can be grays it can be browns it can be reds and it's not necessarily a full opacity color in some cases it is if you look at an x-wing fighter um, it's it's like grandma's quilt there's a lot of different colors on it i don't want to do that but i do want to give a nod to the aesthetic of the universe uh, the star wars universe so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some of this vallejo glaze medium and i'm going to put uh what i've got in my palette i probably put about 10 drops of the glaze medium of this light turquoise added in and i'm going to get some on my brush and i'm going to wipe most of it off onto a paper towel and then i'm just going to go in and i'm going to pick out a panel and i'm going to glaze that on there now what this glaze medium allows me to do is to put the color on and that streaking continues to show through but it changes the color of that panel now you could probably do not probably you could do this with say citadel contrast paint you would just want to put some contrast medium in to thin that out but now i've got that down to a slightly different color and i'll do a few more panels across here uh, i'm not going to do all of them in that color but just a few of them uh, again to just kind of give a nod to the aesthetic of the universe but this is a great way to make whatever you're doing look Star Wars and it's really simple you saw I just I just put that on there in a few strokes and uh, called that panel done I ended up using whole red neutral gray and light turquoise um, on various places on the model all thinned down with that glaze medium um, in the turquoise I added a little bit of black to get kind of a darker color and you can see that I just went around and did those on some panels not all of them all around the model and then kind of a happy accident that I had um, I accidentally uh, let my brush streak across something with the whole red and I thought you know I think I'm just gonna apply a few flicks of that just in various places in the same way with the neutral gray I'm just cleaning off my brush and I'll just get some of this neutral gray again it's thinned with the glaze medium and just 
just streak here and there to add to the to the variety of the finish. All right, I'd given a very nice and thorough explanation of the striping that I was going to put on and why I was going to put it on. And then I said, I'll go do the masking. And I did the masking and I went to start filming the next segment and realized I had never clipped on my microphone. So <laughs> to catch up with that part that I filmed that had no microphone, um, the, the striping that I've seen in photos that was done on these patrol gunships uh, in it both and some of the times I can't tell if it's a screen capture from one of the animated series or from official art or if it's fan art. But in most cases, for the Republic version of the gunship, there's a fairly elaborate color scheme that covers much of the front in a various color, generally blue or red is what I see. And then some large areas of color along the lower part here, the upper part here. Basically, the door remains uncolored. And then it continues on around the tail. It's just a very big chunk of color. Well, I, I didn't want that. I just wanted a stripe down the side. So what I look for when I'm putting a stripe on a model, if there's not uh, you know, a, a, a very, very obvious place for it, I look for something as a starting point. I thought this would be a good starting point for the direction and width of the stripe. So I masked that off and I had to mask it up a little bit here because that angle goes up, but I'm just going to go with it. And then I just stretched it straight back from there and I ran the piece of tape along the top of the door opening. I use that as kind of an anchor point to set what parallel would be back here. So it's roughly parallel with this. And then I just brought it back on towards the tail. And, uh, and that's where I'm going to have it terminate. So that's, that's why I'm just doing one single stripe. And that's kind of the methodology I used for determining where to place the stripe. Now I want the stripe to appear uh, distressed so that it looks already like it's had some chipping and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the paint on with this sponge. Now I could airbrush this. Um, it's masked and it could be airbrushed or I could brush paint it, you know, but that's going to give it very solid coverage. But if I use a sponge, what I'm basically doing is building in the chipping as if the blue has already chipped away some. Now I'm going to go for fairly heavy coverage, but you can see how that's going to give it a chipped appearance. And you just basically keep applying it until you get it looking the way you want. And like for that forward part of the stripe, that's the way I want it to look. So I'm just going to continue doing this all the way to the back. And I have to kind of get some on the edge of the sponge to get up against that area. That's why I masked it off a little heavier because I knew I'd have to be favoring that top edge to get it on there. But I just keep putting this on until I get it looking fairly consistent. Now in the earlier segment, I think I forgot to mention that I thinned that paint down about one to one with water. So it wasn't straight from the bottle. Now what I've done is I've added a few drops of sky gray to it. Um, and I'm not looking for any precise ratio. I just want this blue to be a little lighter than the blue that I've already put on. And, you know, a little lighter is uh, very subjective. So if you're doing this, um, it's whatever you think works. Now, I've thinned the paint down a little heavier. So it's probably two parts paint, or rather one part paint, two parts water. I'm going to put this on over it because I want this to represent just additional fading and distressing and, uh, you know, multiple layers of chipping going on here. I don't want to completely cover up that other blue or the gray that's underneath, but I do want to have multiple things going on there. All right, now with that done, I've put some sky gray in my palette, thinned it about one part paint, one part water. What I'm going to do is, because I've got this masked off, 
just going to go ahead and add in some chipping. Now, the whole reason I did the paint application the way I did was so that it would look chipped, but there's some areas that I want more specifically chipped. Edges and long panel lines and things like that. So this will just give me that in there, but it won't get on that base paint that I've put on there and will allow me later on to go back and add shipping through various methods that's going to look consistent across the whole model. All right, with all the paint applied, I can go in and begin removing the masking. Now when I'm removing the masking, I always do it carefully, slowly, and I pull it back against itself. Something I think I forgot to note earlier was before I apply any masking tape to the model, is I detack it on my hand. I just stick it on my, my hand and I pull it back up. And I do that four or five times for every piece of tape to reduce the tackiness so it makes it easier to pull up here at the end. And that's how it looks. I can live with that. Now this area here looks like some kind of anti-skid coating or something that you walk on. So I'm going to paint that very carefully with some Vallejo German Gray. Now the solar panels have the primer color already on them. And I could paint them like I did the fuselage, but they're a little smaller. And trying to do those broad brush strokes would probably not work well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Vallejo Sky Gray and my handy dandy makeup brush here and I'm going to start off by dry brushing this to bring out all the edges like that and if it gets a little scratchy looking that's okay because that's consistent with the rest of the model and then after I get the edges kind of highlighted I'm going to reload my paintbrush, get a little off on a piece of paper towel here that's off camera. And, uh, and this is all probably out of focus too, so I apologize. And I'm just going to start stippling that on like that so that it continues that random kind of varied, patchy, scratchy, worn look. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, every now and then, take this piece and just stick it onto the model because this just slides on and stick it onto the model and see if it's roughly consistent with the overall look of the rest of the model. I don't want to lighten it up too much but I don't want it to be too dark either. I'm just going to continue doing this and getting it looking pretty close to what I want and then we will make these inner areas dark again. I, I did make sure to dry brush those because I want the edges of them to be highlighted. You'll see why in just a minute. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this Citadel contrast paint. It's called Basiliconum Gray. It's a very very dark gray, almost black. And I'm just going to paint this into that that solar panel area. And this is not thinned, it's just you see it's just straight from the bottle. And then along those edges, I'll just be very careful. I'm going to have to do that off camera so I can get it right up to my face to see what I'm doing. I'm actually looking around the camera and I'm barely able to see what I'm doing right now. But I'll paint this in and what that contrast paint does is it pulls away from the areas that I dry brush, the raised up areas, and it goes down into the recesses and makes them look black. And when it's done, it should look pretty much like I want. All right, you can see how that looks when it's dried off. I, I dried it fairly quickly by hitting it with a hair dryer. And it just looks like you'd expect, uh, you know, it looks very familiar, very TIE Fighter-ish. Um, but that Basiliconum Gray does a really good job of getting in there, flowing around the details, coming off of the raised edges, leaving the color on them, but making that background area look black. I could have used Black Templar for this. Um, it would have been a little starker, a little darker. 
Um, I could have used oils or enamels or even non-oil for this. There's a lot of ways of doing this, but I just thought that the properties of the contrast paint would work best uh, with this. So now I've just got to go and do all of the others that are on the model. All right, I've got all the parts dry fitted, so you can just kind of see where this is going. Certainly still have some weathering to do, but it's definitely one of the more interesting of the Star Wars ships, uh, I think. Very, very definite and distinct look to it. Oops. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful if you're still hanging around at this point. I know it's, uh, it's, it's a time commitment to, uh, to spend half an hour with me, and uh, I thank you uh, for doing so. If you've not already done so, please hit the subscribe button down over here and subscribe to this channel, and also hit the little bell icon so you'll know when I have new videos coming out. There's a place down below to make comments and uh, leave a like, and I would be most grateful if you would do both of those. It'll help me grow the channel. There's also a link down below to Patreon, so if you would like to support me in the work that I do on this channel, I would be most very grateful for your consideration. There's various reward levels there, so if you'd like to take a look at those, uh, please do. If you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much. It is a blessing to me. It is a blessing to my family. Um, your, your support makes what I do possible, and uh, it, it, we, we just couldn't afford for me to do this. Uh, at the pace that I do it with the materials and the equipment and everything else that I do it if it weren't for you. So thank you so, so very much. And with all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought, as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.